Alright, welcome to Beers and Bush Flights. This is leg 5 of our trip from Bordeaux to Mont Blanc. So yesterday we had landed just before reaching the edge of those mountains. We were still pretty much flying over flat land, but I think we're going to be getting into it today. Actually, I know we're going to be getting into it today because I flew this like once um, and I recorded it, um, but things just weren't going right. I It's actually a lot of trouble finding this runway. We'll see later. I'm not even super confident that I'm going to be able to land it first try tonight. Um, but then I accidentally restarted the whole thing and now we're back at our departure location. If you know how the bush flights work in Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, normally if you crash, normally if you crash, you can just pick up, you know, from a little ways back. You're not starting all the way back from your departure location unless you hit restart before you crash. Then you're actually restarting. So I just figured I'm going to record a whole new one. You know, things weren't going right last night. My um, my controls, my flaps weren't uh, bound correctly to the uh, to the, the instrument panel that I have in front of me here. I would hit the button and nothing would happen. I couldn't find the runway. I crashed in the mountain a few times. So I figured, you know what, enough things have gone wrong. Let's uh, Let's just stop and try this again on a better day. So first thing I need to check, of course, we need to make sure we are on the right leg of our trip in the flight computer here. So we are at LFCO. Sure wish I didn't have to do this every time. Maybe I'm missing something extremely obvious, and that's, but I, I don't recall having this problem on other trips. Just this one, where it doesn't seem to start at my current location. Okay, direct to... Activate yes. Okay. All right. Let's get back to our flight plan. Let's turn this crap off because we're not looking at two maps at the same time. That's pointless. We got our map here. All right. So instructions start off saying prepare for your journey into the Pyrenees Mountains, a majestic range that forms a natural border between France and Spain. Departing from airport, head southeast, follow the river that skirts the base of the mountains, climbing to 7,000 feet as you make your way towards the gateway of the Pyrenees, the Pyrenees Mountains. So, if you recall, we had just uh, flew our approach and landed on this kind of sketch little airfield here. It's got plenty of room, but if you look down the center, there's just tons of pits and holes and stuff, so you want to make sure you, uh, you, you land in the green areas on this runway. So you can get into some pretty, uh, some pretty sketchy stuff near the center line, center of it. And we'd flown over that first century town that was behind us, and now we're in uh, Herrera here. I'll throw up some pictures. No windsock, um, so I don't know if it put us downwind or upwind. I think I remember it was only two knot winds anyway, so I don't think it matters a whole lot. Flaps are set, fuel looks good. Alright, I think we're going to run it. Parking brakes off, and uh, up we go. So we're going to depart and head to the southeast. Easy enough. Basically get up in the air and turn right. That's the plan. And for a grass strip, it's um not too bumpy. We're on a bit of an uphill here. That's cool. climb out. I realized, um, yeah, so I realized I'd been probably throwing my flaps up a little too early, so I'm leaving flaps that take off for a minute or so until we start climbing out of, uh, uh, until we start picking up speed. Again, a little bit of altitude. So if I remember correctly, yeah, we're going to climb to about 7,000 feet. Um, it's going to be a pretty hilly kind of landscape that we're going to be skirting through. We're going to follow a river, this river to the right of us. Somewhere there. I promise it's somewhere. I see it on the map. So we're following this pretty much right into the mountains. Um, and we're going to follow it pretty much through the mountains. So let's get those flaps up. I think we're good. 
Um, another thing that I learned recently, and I, I feel kind of stupid for not knowing this, but you know the runway numbers? Um, they're not just arbitrary. Uh, those runway numbers have significant the bearing, the direction um, that they uh, are laid out on. So if it's runway 22, chances are you're approaching at 220 degrees on the compass. Um, that's why the opposite end of the runway is usually something like uh, 0 to 20 degrees, right? I think that makes sense, doing math correctly today. It's just some nice rolling hills along this landscape. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not sitting here with a beer in front of me because it's a Saturday afternoon and I... Uh, so it's called Beer and Bush Flights and it is very much in the spirit of Beer and Bush Flights, but um, there, there's not going to be any beer this afternoon, so... I don't know, maybe it'll turn out to be a better show without the beer, but I feel like it uh, kind of ruins the charm. We'll see if we can't make up for it. All right, let's get around these clouds a little bit. Plenty of wide open spaces to land if we had to, and there's the river that we're gonna be following there. So we just follow as it winds through. It's gonna go right, right between these two mountain passes up here, if you guys see them. That's our entrance. That is our gateway to the Pyrenees, as they called it. So once we sort of reach the entrance here, the spot between the two break and these these, uh, these mountains, we uh, are going to follow the river right on in, continuing uh, until a point of confluence with another mountain stream at the town of Laurence. So like I was saying, I, I flew this entire flight last night, um, and I spent a god-awful amount of time trying to find the stupid runway. It's, it's not an easy runway to find. A little screenshot of it here but even that's kind of deceiving because see the runway it's actually here it's right to the left of this little road that you see it doesn't look anything like an airstrip in the screenshot and it doesn't look anything like an airstrip in the sim so good freaking luck finding this thing without some kind of um external assistance i, I cheated i went and watched a few videos and you know all the videos i saw people were having the exact same problem. They were having problems locating it, and uh, they were having problems landing on it too, so I feel pretty confident that I'm going to be able to locate it this time. Landing it might be another story. It'll become more clear once you see it, but um, it's in a pretty precarious spot, dangerous area. Um, if you miss your approach, um, you have relatively few options to, you know, to get out of it because it's pretty much right at the base of another uh, steep hill. So you pretty much need to turn out right away, um, and you're pretty much boxed in by mountains on either side of you. So you, you would have to get into a pretty tight turn. Uh, this plane stalls pretty freaking easily when you're that low and getting below, you know, getting around 60 knots. It's, um, I'd say it was like the ideal plane for that particular landing strip. I would never hope to attempt that in real life or be on a plane that's trying to make that approach in real life like this. It's interesting. Normally when I'm flying uh, uh, way out in the mountains, you feel like you're really out there, man. You feel like you're away from all of civilization and that it's just you and your plane and the wilderness. Um, but one thing I've noticed here and you'll see this trend pretty much along the whole way is there's a lot of interesting little communities and towns and mountain villages and the sort all pretty much along um, this valley. So there's a lot of signs of life out here. And it's such a gorgeous landscape, but I imagine it's um, a bit challenging. I'm trying to have a house out here, <laughs> trying to get supplies out here fairly certain that's a house on top of that hill here, which is this kind of switchback path leading up or down it. It's pretty sketchy too. One thought I had was maybe um, going back and redoing some of my old bush flights, um, particularly the ones I didn't record, and actually take the opportunity to land at some of these more interesting spots, like on the top of that mountain. 
you know, I want to be kind of in the spirit of doing bush flying. I want to see something cool and just go land there and get out and check it out. Um, I feel like that might be a good excuse for that camping add-on from Parallel 42, set up a cool little camp. I really like the idea of that, but it's kind of a lot of money to spend just to use something to generate cool screenshots with. But that would be a good excuse, maybe. So, 177 degrees south. We are following the river right on in. Continue until a point of confluence with another mountain stream. Cool. Follow the east flowing branch of the confluence as the river leads you to the Goretzky station at the end of the valley just northwest of Goret. Look for a switchback road cutting a path up the mountains and make your way to it. Well, that was pretty interesting. <laughs> switchback road. Right back there, I guess there's going to be some more of those. So, I think we're just going to follow this uh, this river right around here. We are at 7,200 feet, so we are more than high enough, according to the, uh, the flight plan here. So I'm going to bring back the throttle a little bit and trim this down. East flowing branch. Okay, so there's the east flowing branch of the river. Kind of difficult to see, but right in between the trees down there, and that's the eastern branch that we are going to fall out. Lose a little bit of altitude here on purpose. So what we want to do, so this valley actually ends. If I were to try to turn right up here, the stream goes, we would be right inside of a mountain. So what we're going to do instead is look for a nice um, little uh, path to cut through. It mentions a road that we should probably follow. You can kind of see a little divot between these two mountains. Off to the left, there's a nice little curved space that we can probably get through pretty easily at our current altitude. I don't really want to be too high because I still want to be low enough to see the stuff they're talking about here. Remember some really cool houses up here on the left too. Keep an eye out for those. This is a ski lodge. Not seeing a lot of snow. Maybe it's not the right time of year. Maybe we're just on the wrong side of it. But there are definitely some mountains off in the distance that look like uh, got plenty of snow on their caps on the top. So this must be our road with a bunch of switchbacks, and I'm going to guess that right there is the, uh, the ski lodge thing. Okay. So we're going to track, I think it said north, uh, northeast now, along some hills with a bunch of roads on them, which I see right up here, right? East of your position, a series of hills awaits with roads tracking along the peaks. As you fly over them, continuing east, you will come across a river flowing northeast. Follow the Valley of Arends. All right. Here's the, uh, the Valley of Arends, apparently. From what I remember, there was another cool little town. Nope. Nope, this is mostly farms. Town is going to be up on the other side, from what I recall. Voyager would be fun to just bomb right down that valley back out. I have to try that next time. Alright, I'm going to kick on the fuel transfer only because I tend to forget to do this when I'm not thinking about it. And I think another problem I was having last night was I let the left wing uh, get 
kind of out of balance with the right wing in terms of how much fuel was left, and the plane was handling pretty funny. I also went in and adjusted some of my uh, some of the settings on the flight controls. This is uh, this is kind of a cool tip. So, you know, one of the things I always liked about X Plane over Flight Simulator, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, was the way the planes felt. They just felt like they had more weight to them, right? Yeah. You know? um, it felt, you know, it was taking time to process whatever input you were giving, and that added to sort of the the feel and the overall believability of flying that plane. Um, so I lowered the reactivity settings. You know, if you go into the joystick settings, in my case, the Alpha uh, honey, Honeycomb Alpha Flight Yoke, and I lowered reactivity to about negative 60. And that does make things feel a good deal more weighty, if that makes sense. As you fly over, continue east, and you will come across... Oops. And you will come across... Um, See the hills away, come across the river flowing northeast to the Valley of Aaron's Great. Okay. Alright, let the flowing water of Ajunge Gavi lead you northeast, and soon you will reach another great river confluence near the town of Argilis Gazal. Cool. Okay. Alright, let's try to get away from these clouds here. Uh, oh, bear with me one second. I, I need to check a setting, because I, I hit a button that I didn't mean to, and I want to make sure. Yeah, we're still good. Okay. Alright, sorry about that. Wanted to make sure I didn't uh, accidentally stop my recording. Okay. Fuel's about caught up now. Let's cut that off. The flowing waters of Zinkabi leading northeast, and soon you will reach another great river confluence in the town of Argelis Gazelle. Okay, Argelis Gazelle, that's what we're looking for here. Another small town. So no matter what, I'm going to get this landing this time. We, I'm not promising that I'm going to get it on the first try, or maybe even the second try, but we are going to do it this afternoon. I'm committed. This seemed like one of the more difficult ones that everybody struggles with, so I'm glad I'm not alone in that. But we are going to figure out how to do this. I think one of my fears was of getting too low. Or, uh, uh, or, or getting, you know, too too slow. That was that was one of the problems I was experiencing because the the runway just comes right up on you. It's just like right on the top of a mountain, and suddenly you're there. Um, so I was really trying to bleed off a lot of airspeed uh, because I knew that I'd be coming right up on the runway, and I didn't really have time to turn around and reposition myself and um, you know fix my my airspeed and stuff. So I was coming in really low, really slow, full flaps. I was having issues with flaps too, and. You know, when I would miss it, I would try to go around, and I would already pretty much be on the bottom of the power curve, and I just couldn't climb out um, beyond the terrain that was right beyond the runway, and that, that happened a few times. So this time, I'm just going to drive it in, man. We're going to use whatever power we need to stay at a good flight, a uh, good flight level, and we're not falling. Okay, at Argelis is a turn and track the river branch running southeast in the distance ahead. You will see another great confluence and should follow the waters that lead further southeast. Okay. Alright, that makes sense. Looks like we're going to cut right through that valley there. I'm going to start turning into it. Just a nice shallow turn. 
course here. All right, take it to the next leg. We are entering into the next uh, mountain range here, I guess. Interesting to kind of map all these out myself and see where some of these little passes go. Like, I want to see kind of what's over there. Up to another little mountain town, maybe. So we're coming up on reset point. I call it reset point because um, at the start of this next POI, one that says USR 31, that's where it resets you um, when you inevitably crash on this landing, if you're me at least. So I had some ideas for another video I might try. It's not another beer and bush flight. It's not even another bush flight. I've been following the Trent Palmer stuff for a few years now, where he's violated by the FAA for uh, doing some low passes over a buddy's uh, backyard airfield kind of thing. Um, I guess it was like an RC airstrip in the guy's backyard. He lived on at least 10 plus acres of land, so it was, it was pretty remote, but he has neighbors, and the neighbors complained, and he was doing his low passes to evaluate the airfield and its and the suitability for land. Trent, I guess, decided that the airfield was not he wasn't feeling particularly comfortable with putting it down there, and uh, and he aborted. He was doing one of his low passes. He wasn't, you know, was just trying to get visual on things, and he decided it didn't look good, and he didn't land there. And the FAA came down on him pretty hard. The neighbors complained, right? They said they were kind of buzzing by the house. He was going low, and he was. I think he was like at 30 feet or so is what the report says on his final pass. It gets a little lower each time, goes by ultimately down to about 30 feet. Um, and they wanted to pull his license temporarily suspended, and he's been fighting it for years, I guess. I think at first the FAA was saying, like, you know, the reason that he was in violation in the, this process was because the airstrip wasn't suitable for landing at all. And he should have known that it wasn't a proper airfield, didn't have a windsock, blah, blah, blah. Um, the problem is you don't really know that information until you make a pass below it, so... And, and I don't even think that's a requirement anyways. Um, so that, that argument was dropped by the FAA. And now they were saying it should have been apparent before he got that low at 30 feet that it wasn't suitable for landing um, before he continued to make lower and lower series of passes. I think that's the last I've heard of it. So my idea was we, we know the location where he did this. Um, we know whereabouts it was. We know... Um, uh, we have his plane, we have the Freedom Fox, so my idea was to just go there and try to recreate his low passes and see if the FAA has any legs to stand on there. Is it apparent from a greater altitude that this is not a great air uh, uh, spot for landing? So I think I might do a video. I might just set myself up out there and do a few passes in the Freedom Fox and see for myself what Trent saw that day. See if what the FAA is saying has any uh, any um, any validity to it. So I think that might be my next video, and it's a good excuse to fly the box things to do with that plane because it's really cool. All right, we are at reset point, so I can tell you because I've done it a few times now. Uh, when you crash your plane here, it's going to put you back at about 7,000 feet, pretty much coming up right on this mountain on my left. Um, and the last few times I did it, I don't know what the hell was bugging out with it, but it pretty much put me at full speed, about 6,800, 6,500, straight into the mountain, and I had to rip up right on the yoke right away to avoid it, which was um, exciting. So here we are in reset point. The 
heart of the Luce and Cephala is another confluence of waterways. The Boston River will lead you east toward the Castillo and Delicat Airport at the end of the valley. Yeah, so that's where you, you will see this valley. There's a break in it on the right, and it's pretty much like right on the edge of that where it breaks off. If that makes sense. And they suggest making a right turn. That's pretty much your only option to land on this because it's also, also forgot to mention, it's kind of on an uphill. So that's cool. It's pretty much right over this, uh, you see this, this, uh, this, this increased spot here, this higher part that I'm about to go over. It's pretty much right on the other side of that sucker. From what I remember. So my plan is I'm just going to try to put it down as quickly as I can. I'm not going to worry a whole lot about airspeed. I'm just going to try to get on the ground. Even if it's a little fast, I'll deal with it. Because we're coming up on an uphill, I figure. Um, we are going to need full flaps, no doubt. But I'm not going to worry too much about the um, about trying to slow myself way down. Oops. And it's right here. <laughs> I think I just about... Did I miss it? No. It's right on the other side of this, I think. Yeah. Full flaps. Oh, did I miss it? Holy crap, I don't even know, man. See, this is why it's so tricky. You just, you really don't know. All right, flaps up full speed. Let's try to turn back out, make another go at it. Jeez, what is with my rudder pedals right now? Wow, that was weird. Okay, high banking turn. Definitely don't need to be climbing at that rate. Okay, throttle back a little bit. There it is. You can't even see it when you're coming up on it. I see it now. It's right freaking there. <laughs> Okay, let me try to wind myself up a little bit. Yep, that's it. Okay. Oh, I get full flaps and I really can't, I really can't get any slower here. Or uh, get any, any, yeah. Okay, this is tricky and I'm coming in extremely quick. This is an extremely short runway. Oh, I wish I had reversers right about now. That would be good. Okay. Okay, we are not gonna make that. Right into the ground. It was closer. It was closer than last time. So let's let's try it one more time here. Well, all your subsequent progress will be lost. No, I don't want to do that. Restart from last completed waypoint. That's what I screwed up last time. Okay, so I definitely just want to be a little lower next time. Oh Jesus, it's gonna put me right here. Okay. All right. Okay. This crap out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, it puts us at like 4,000 feet. Well, maybe I should stay at 4,000 feet. That, that might help us a little bit. Doesn't leave us a lot of options. Um, a lot of options here. But... Okay. This 
is a really weird optical illusion. So I, I am flying about level here, but it feels like I'm heading straight for the ground because the ground is coming up in front of us. So that's where things were starting to feel really weird last night. I felt like my controls were all screwy, like the plane was trimmed down or something. Um, and it's not. You're, you're actually, if anything, I'm tend to be climbing a little bit more here. It just doesn't feel bad. Coming up on it. <clears throat> I think I might actually be too low here because remember it was kind of up on that crest a little bit. It's pretty much right on the other side of this big hill. Can't even see it. Can't even see it until you're right up on it. things especially tricky. Okay. And am I too low? I might be a little too low right now. Let's see what happens. Yep, I'm going to be definitely too low. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. There it is. Flaps. Just whatever you do, don't stall before we hit the ground. Okay. Okay. Boy, this feels fast. Okay, got it. We sure got it. Wow. I'm not looking forward to taking off from you, but that'll be tomorrow's problem. <laughs> Holy crap. That took, okay, so this was two attempts today and about three attempts yesterday. So this took me about five attempts. Um, those first three attempts, I, I didn't even know where the hell the runway was. Um, the last couple I did, but uh, it still is a really tricky runway. You don't see it until you're right up on it. It's pretty much right on the top of a hill. Um, and this plane, it can climb, but it can't out climb the terrain coming up in front of it sometimes. So, yes. All right. That's beer and bush trips, leg five. Hopefully leg six will be a little more successful, but I think we're going to have a lot of trouble getting out of here. So stay tuned for that. That could be fun.